You are there guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft and today we're taking a look at the Fabarm STF-12 shotgun. Now I've owned the STF for about four months now which has really given me lots of hours of gaming time, I've got to know the quirks of the gun, how it works and most importantly I've given it a chance to break. Now if there's something specific you want to find out about the gun I've left timestamps in the description down below so if you go click on those it'll skip ahead to the part of the video that's most relevant to you. And with that out of the way, on with the review. The Fabarm STF-12 is a licensed replica of the real steel Fabarm STF-12, a modern modular shotgun design featuring interchangeable stocks, barrel lengths, ammo tube extensions, the top rail, muzzle brakes, everything was designed to be interchangeable depending upon the combat situation. Whilst it was only chambered for the 12 gauge shotgun shell, this lack of variety is more than made up for by the fact of the types of 12 gauge shells on offer. They can fire anything from double lock buckshot and solid slug rounds to dragon's breath and door breaches. The sheer amount of things you can fire out of a 12 gauge is nuts. In the airsoft world, it's manufactured by a company called Bow Manufacture, which I had honestly never heard of up to this point. Um, I first saw this being advertised at a new pro booth, so I assumed that they made it, but Bow Manufacture is a French company that licenses the gun, and it's actually made in China by a company that I was unable to find, unfortunately. Uh, I picked this up from Airsoft World for £60. At the time of recording, they don't have this specific variation in stock. They have the stockless one and the one with the longer barrel in black, but they do have this one in tan as well, so I'm going to leave a link in the description to that down below if you're interested. So aside from the gun itself, what do you get in the box when it turns up? Uh, well, first thing to know, it actually arrived with this crumpling in it. Uh, so not particularly great shipping from Airsoft World this time, unfortunately. Um, well, first off, you don't really get a box. You get a cardboard cover over a polystyrene block. This tends to be the thing when you get in the really cheap guns, though. Uh, so included, obviously, is the STF-12. It includes two detachable um, front and rear iron sights, which are quite nice. You have a cleaning rod inside, you have a speed loader, your token packet of rubbishy BBs, and two shells included, and a pamphlet, because I refuse to call this a manual. It's literally just that. That's it. Um, three pages at most, and the whole thing is written in French. The whole thing. There are only two little bits of English where they're actually pointing out certain things like the trigger, the grip. Yeah, great guys, I really needed to know what the grip was. Thanks for that. Um, so you do get a couple of nice little goodies in there, the speed loader is especially appreciated even though you're going to get the two shells with it, but they just really didn't try with that manual to be honest. So first impressions when I picked up the STF-12. It's extremely light, which is to be expected because the whole thing is plastic construction. Uh, it does creak a little bit, like I've started to notice a little wobble developing in the back of the stock here, but obviously for 60 quid I was hardly expecting Tokyo Marine to build quality. However, one cool thing as well when you pick it up, yes it's all plastic except for the bits you're actually holding, like the pistol grip and the pump action itself have got this really nice almost rubberized texture to it, it's really quite smooth, a little bit velvety, it's, it's weird to describe because I know it's rubber but it doesn't feel like it, which even though you know it's cheap, it's lightweight, it's plastic, these two grips here make it feel a lot more professional and like it's worth more than you actually know the cost of the gun was. So let's go over some of the features of the gun, starting right at the back with a fixed stock. Now it's got this really nice rubberized texture on it, there's a lot of area on here so it sits in your shoulder quite nicely, which is very good for a spring gun because more often than not you're priming into your shoulder. So very comfortable stock that, yes it's developing a slight creak but it's very minor. Uh, one other thing that's very minor about the stock as well is how it's slightly curved to the right uh, to favour right handed shooting, but it's so minimalistic that when you switch to the left shoulder you barely notice, so I kind of wonder why they bothered with that. Uh, going forward is the pistol grip, now it's extremely comfy to hold, has the same cool little rubbery almost texture as the pump grip, so very nice depending on which hand you're holding it with, it's good for both. Uh, the safety is this little button just in front of it, you push in the left side to knock the gun on safe, that'll stop the trigger being able to pull back, you push in the right side, that'll allow you to fire the gun. Uh, the trigger itself is very crisp, it has minimal travel on it, which is to be expected of spring powered guns to be fair because um, it's a basic mechanism. Uh, going up on the top is the monolithic top rail. Um, one thing to note about the rails is that they are plastic. This goes for the top one and the bottom one as well. Um, you can remove it entirely with the screws on the top, but I might as well just leave it on. Um, you do have the included iron sights as well, which have like the little tritium 
two green dots, one red dot at the front, which when you've got sunlight on top of them, lights them up, very cool, very efficient as well. You can adjust this back one for elevation by just turning in the Phillips screw at the top, but they're very lightweight, and if you don't like them, you can just go and screw them and not take them out, or just put a red dot on. Uh, going forward is the pump grip itself, very comfortable to hold, but the really cool thing about it is the rail on the bottom. Now, when I first got this gun, I looked at it and thought, oh, brilliant, I can put a vertical grip on that and pump off of that. I really do not recommend you do that. Um, as mentioned, the rail is plastic. The pump grip it's uh, holding onto is plastic as well, but the screws holding it in are metal. If you put a pump grip on that and you try and uh, pull it back with the vertical grip, it's going to damage the rail, if not break it off entirely. Do not use a vertical grip on this rail. It will break. It just will. It can't handle the stress of being used as a grip of that. What the rail is good for, however, is putting a laser light combination on. So if you're going indoors and you want a torch or a laser, that is the perfect place to mount it. So it is a really cool feature, even though it can't take a vertical grip, unfortunately. Uh, the mag release for the gun is located just here on the right side in front of the trigger. Press it towards you and that will eject the mag. Now, as this is a tri-shot shotgun, your 30 round shells will give you 10 shots each. So, quite low capacity, but you're getting multiple shots with those, so you're going to get the kills a lot easier if you're within range of the gun. Um, a little thing to know about the compatibility of these shells as well. The gun really favours the new Prol style over the Tokyo Marui style. Um, what I think it is, is the little release mechanism in the top is a lot stiffer on the TM shells, so it really does not like these. It doesn't fire with them most of the time. The new Pro ones, however, it has had no problem with at all. Uh, one problem that I have noticed with the gun is a little one. It doesn't actually affect the performance in any way, but um, something's a bit off with the feeding at times. I think it's when I was trying to run the TM shells in it, and the, sh the BBs would not uh, load themselves into the barrel. Instead, they'd end up rattling around in the pump grip. And you can, as you're running with it, you hear the beebs rattle around in there, and it's a bit annoying. Like, it doesn't affect the performance, because I would have thought I might crush him by accident or something, but it, it's never done that. It's just irritating. So I kind of had to, like, pry it apart and get those BBs out, but that's the only real gripe with this gun that I found. So, when I was last up at Skirmish Airsoft in Mansfield, I was able to get a shooting test in with the gun. The test was taken at 30 metres, I was firing from a stable position, however it was done outside so there was a little bit of crosswind to factor in on the day. So, as can be seen from the test, the results are actually quite surprising in a good way. Considering that there's no adjustable hop on this, all three barrels have a fixed hop system inside them, I was consistently hitting the 30 meter target with the middle round. The other two were also consistently going slightly left or right at a predictable spread pattern. So, it was actually really quite easy to hit a target at 30 meters. Anything beyond that you might struggle, but anything within those 30 meters, if you're pointing at it, one of these three BBs is going to hit it, absolutely guaranteed. So. Really quite impressive shooting from a gun without an adjustable hop-up. Um, now this is the point where I'd usually put in the chronograph test, but it is a try shot. Uh, a lot of people in disagreements about how you would chrono that, and to be honest, a lot of the sites I've been to don't chrono try shots at all, so I've left it out in this case. So, where do you want to be on the airsoft field to get the absolute most out of this gun? As a tri-shot shotgun, the answer to this should be obvious. You want to be getting as up close in people's faces as you possibly can. Granted, you only have an effective range of about 30 metres. Anything beyond that is going to be a bit dicey. But in those 30 metres, anything you pull the trigger on is gone. Um, which is great for CQB, especially when clearing corners. You can just have the gun pre-primed, go around the corner, bang, duck back into cover to rack the pump grip to go back in again. And that's what I recommend you do with this, because the effective rate of fire of this, because you're pumping between each shot, is very minimal. 
Also, make sure your shells are topped up with rounds constantly. Take a speed loader into games with you. Whenever you get a break in the gameplay, take your shell out, get your spares out, fill them up with the speed loader and get ready. You never want to be caught unprepared with this gun because your ammo count is so low. That said, however, you can really make this work because it's such a lightweight platform. You can very easily get up in people's faces and there's not that much they can do about it. So definitely easy to work with this shotgun up in close range. So ultimately then, would I recommend buying the Favarm STF-12? Absolutely. I have had so much fun with this gun, uh, especially considering how cheap it was as well. It's very affordable, you can get into games and it's useful because you can hit targets at 30 meters quite consistently. I've been able to use this gun outdoors and still rack up the kills with it, so I've had a lot of fun in my time with it. Granted, you are massively outgunned by AEG users wherever you go. But this has its perks and downsides. Yes, it's going to be harder to get those kills in games where everyone's got automatic guns, but when you do, it just feels so much more satisfying knowing that you're competing with an underpowered gun. So if you're looking for a tri-shot shotgun, this is one to keep an eye on. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed my video review of the Fabarm STF-12 shotgun. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me or feedback you'd like to give, maybe you want to share your own experiences of the gun. Leave them in the comments section down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.